Hi guys, so sorry about the noise, the air conditioner's on because I am sweating. And if I'm talking a little funny, it's because last week, or the week before, I got sick. I had a stuffy nose. My nose is still stuffy, so if I still sound sick or if I'm talking really loud, that's why. So I, this is the only time this week I can record a video. So let's just get right into it. I have a couple different types of books this time. So let's get right into it with this one. This is called A Secret Between Us. It's by Judy Dorate. I don't know that's how you say her last name. I butcher people's last names. It's a Harlequin special edition. It was from February 2021. This is what it looks like. And this book isn't like other Harle Harlequin books. It's thicker. Um, when I first picked this book out, I thought that it was a two-in-one book from when I picked it out out of my one bag, but it's not as a whole. It's just one story. It's about this woman who she got pregnant as a teenager, and she was in the foster system when she was younger. <clears throat> I No, she didn't know. It was, I think her aunt, I don't remember, because you know, like, her, her, uh, her friend was in the foster system. I don't know if she was. She might have been. I don't remember. Or she was raised by her aunt. And they end up living together on this ranch. She's leaving this. Um, she left where she used to live with her boyfriend because her boyfriend found out she was pregnant and didn't want the baby. And then here she's in this small little town where she's a waitress. She finds out that she's, well, she knows she's pregnant, but she's pregnant with twins. And here she's falling for this guy who really isn't like a romantic kind of guy. He doesn't really like commitment in a relationship. His last girlfriend, they, um, she wanted to marry him. He didn't want that kind of commitment. He's helping this, um, teenage girl raise her half siblings because they lost both their parents and she they have to live with her while she's coping with all this stuff the one thing i will and he's also um the kids baseball coach the one thing i will say in this book is is because it's a lengthier book it's not fast paced like most harlequin books are it's kind of on the slow side um, there's 16 chapters in this. They are long. Some, some are shorter, and then some you're kind of like, okay, like, this chapter should have ended already. Or there's, like, lots of stuff in the book where you're like, okay, like, did we really need this in the book? Like, I mean, you could have edited some of it out. This book was really funny. I think this is the first one in the series. This is called Getting Old is Murder. It's by Rita Lankin. It's Meet Gladdy Gold, Florida's Oldest Private Eye. And this is what it looks like. And this book was really funny. The chapters were short in it. Um, there, was, there wasn't any, like, numerical chapter marks. It was just, like, um, it would just say the names of chapters, not how many chapters were in the book. Um, it's about this woman who she's kind of, um, she reads mystery novels. And she lives in this retirement community in Florida. And these coincidences keep happening there where um, these elderly people are dying like the night before their birthdays. And nobody knows why. Everybody thinks it's because they're having heart attacks or something like that. So it's up to Gladys and her um, wacky friends to help her solve the mystery now in this book there's um i don't know if it's i don't think all of them are but at least like her friends and herself they're jewish so there is um words in this book that you might not know what they mean or sayings but she does have like a glossary in the um first couple pages to tell you hey these are what these words mean just in case you need help trying to figure out what they are. But they were really good. The The women in this book were funny. It was just a funny mystery book. You know what I mean? It was, it was cute. I really liked it. Like, if I see any more of these, I might pick them up because these were funny. So this book is kind of ironic in a way. Um, this is, I think, a short story or like a novella. 
Um, I never heard of this book. It said it came out in, like, I think it was, like, the 80s. Um, which, I mean, is kind of okay because... Oh, I am don't know where's the... Let me see. Um, it came out, yeah, like, 1980. And usually with Stephen King books, like, if he writes, like, short stories, they're in, like, a big compilation book. So he might have read the story before. I don't know. I never heard of it. I don't remember ever reading this one. Um, it's called The Mist. Like I said, it's by Stephen King. It's a short book. Um, it doesn't have any chapter marks. It just is like in parts, you know, like he usually does where it's like one through whatever. Um, this is about their, they're in this small little town. I think it was in Maine or somewhere in, yeah, it was in Maine. I was gonna say it was some, if, if it's not in Maine, it's in New England somewhere. And the storm comes. And what happens is, is the next day after the storm comes, um, people are going out. They're trying to f assess the damages around the town. They go to this, um, the main character and his son go to the supermarket and here this mist starts showing up, like this thick fog where you can't see anything except like right in front of you. And this mist brings these weird alienist, Mystic characters, creatures, and nobody knows why. They think it was this experiment that um, these army people were doing in the town. So all these people are trapped in the supermarket because anytime somebody ventures out, one of these weird creatures um, kills them, kills the people in the town. And the main character and some of the other characters that were in the store and his son try to make it out but the one thing is is the it was a good book until the last part of the book and i'm not gonna say why but it was just like oh like really like you know what i mean like the book was so good like i wanted to read it to see if they were gonna get out or if these creatures were gonna come in and attack them and it was funny because because of the forest fires that were happening in canada it was all misty where I lived, where, you know, you couldn't see the sun. It was all icky. The air quality was bad. And I'm thinking, wow, like, that was pretty funny or kind of ironic that after I read this book, it was literally right after I read this book and I started another book, that this fog, smoky air came. And I was like, oh, wow, that is really kind of freaky. So this book took me a while to read because it is... A romance book. I'm trying to get into that kind of genre. I see um, Kara Emily. She likes um, romance books, so I try to read some that she reads. She didn't really like this book. I thought this book was okay. It was called Book Lovers. It's by Emily Henry. This is what it looks like. And it's about these two people who they're in like the book publishing, editing kind of world. And what happens is, is this woman and her sister, the, well, the main character and her sister, they go to this small little town where her one client's book was set. And they end up meeting this man who she met, like, I don't know if it was like a couple months ago or a couple years ago or whatever, and who didn't want this book published. And they're all there to get away for a little bit. He's there because he actually lived in this small town. And he's helping to, um, for the summer, he's trying to help his dad because his dad, something happened with his dad. And he's trying to run the local bookstore. And it's kind of like a Hallmark-esque type of book where they fall in love with each other based on this little bookstore and her sisters, she thinks her sister's having problems in her relationship with her husband. They have two kids, and they're trying to balance that. Plus, she's pregnant with another baby. And her sister thinks she just went on this um, little vacation to get away from everything. And her sister's trying to, like, has this bucket, li bucket list of things to do in this small little town. And she wants her sister to help out with them. And the one is to save, like, this little, like, to save a building in the town, which ends up being the library. And she, and this woman is basically like, 
her the main character is basically like work 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 nothing else and she doesn't have any time for a relationship. She said, you know, because of stuff that happened with when their mom died, she had to help raise her sister so she couldn't take these jobs that she really wanted and all this stuff. And then she has to figure out, you know, does she want to be this famous publisher, agent, editor, whatever, or does she want to actually have, like, her life back kind of thing? So this one is is a historical book. It's called Revolutionary Mothers, Women in the Struggle for America's Independence. It's by Carol Birkin. This is what it looks like. It's a small little book. Um, the chapters are long in it, though, because it is a historical book. It basically um, starts with... It starts... Um, it's about a book about women's role in the Revolutionary War. Um, it goes through um, soldiers' wives. It goes through the soldiers that were loyalists. It goes through the African-American women and their role in the war. It goes through the colonial women who were just like, how to pick up and be like the farmers and learn how to run a farm by themselves. Um, it was a good book. It does, it goes through, um, the first part is, is like the introduction and then it goes into rem what women did before the war and then the chunks during the war, and then the last part is, is what women's roles looked like after the war was over. Sometimes they went back to just being the wife again. Sometimes um, it changed where they, you know, they left the States, they went back to England and all this stuff, or they, they finally realized they had more of a role than just Watching the kids, cooking, cleaning the house, all that type of stuff. It was a good book. Um, it is, like, really lengthy to get through, though. Like I said, like, sometimes with the chapters being long, I had to read them in chunks because it's, you know, it's it's a historical book. Like, it wasn't like a book that, like, um, like the book lover's book where I could just read it. I had to, like, take breaks during the Revolutionary Mother book. This one, now, this one was written at a time where, like, I'm at a time where, you know, stuff was going on in the world, so there is stuff in this book that isn't really, um, has historical references in it, because this book was written in the 1970s, 1971, um, so, and then it's also because some of the countries in the book were all still together in chunks, so it wasn't like the countries that are around now in Europe. Um, this is the, called The Elusive Mrs. Pol Pol Polyfax. It's by Dorothy Gilman. This is what it looks like. It's a small little book. They're kind of like Agatha Christie books. It's about this woman who, she has to go to, I forget what country it was. I think Yugoslavia or Bulgaria or something. And they're under this, like ruler, I don't know if it was, like, a communist ruler, I don't know, um, because I think it was, like, around that time where, like, wars were happening or stuff was going on, you know, like, with Korea and all that kind of stuff, um, so she has to go over to one of those countries with these passports to get these people out of this country so they can come back and not be under this ruler, and this thing happens along the way while she's trying to figure out, like, she's trying, she has to go on this, like, itinerary of things because if not, then the, um, country's, um, law enforcement are going to be after her and all this stuff, so she has to do everything by the book. And this thing happens where she met these people in this airport and <clears throat> lo and behold, when she gets to this other country, she finds out they're there, and this thing happens to one of their friends or or somebody in their group, and she has to help them. It was a really good book. Like I said, it was kind of like um, Miss Marple from Agatha Christie books, kind of like maybe her friend. I thought that this was another book that I had. It was another series. I thought it was about like this older woman who I think she was, like, English or something, but she was, like, a maid. I thought this was that series, but it wasn't, because in that other series, I just... Well, the other character in that other series I was talking about, the chapters are really long. These chapters were really short in it. I don't remember how many chapters there were. I think there was, like, less than 20 chapters in this book. 
But all in all, this was a good book review video, good book read for this month. I'll see you guys next time with another video and hope you guys have a wonderful day.